Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video on stationary points. In this video, we're going to start off by looking at how to use differentiation to find the coordinates of stationary points. And then in the second part of the video, we're going to look at how to use the second derivative to show whether a turning point or stationary point is a maximum or a minimum. So first of all, stationary points are sometimes called turning points, and they're points on the graph where the graph turns, so to speak. So as you can see, this parabola has got a turning point or a stationary point at the top here, and this would be a maximum. And the reason it's a maximum is because the gradient is positive to begin with. At this particular point, the gradient is zero, so dy by dx is equal to zero at this point, and then the gradient is then negative, so the graph turns at this point, or it's called stationary because the gradient is equal to zero. There are maximum turning points, called maxima, if there's more than one. There's minimum turning points, called minima, if there's more than one. And there's also points of inflection. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on maxima and minima. Uh, watch the video on Corp Mavs if you want to learn more about points of inflection. So first of all, let's have a look at how to find those coordinates of those stationary points. And just to remember, dy by dx is equal to zero. So in other words, when you differentiate, you know that the gradient function will be equal to zero at the particular turning points of those stationary points. So let's have a look at our first example now. So first example says, find the coordinates of the minimum point of the graph y equals x squared minus 6x plus 4. Now I've started off with this one, this is quite a nice one. We could have done this question by using completing the square, but we're going to use differentiation because it's a fantastic approach to finding the coordinates of these points really easily. So we've got our y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 4. So we're going to differentiate to get dy by dx. So this gradient function. So let's differentiate. So bring the power down, 2x, and reduce the power by 1. So 2x to the power of 1, or just 2x. And then differentiate in minus 6x, so that would be minus 6. And then differentiate in 4 would be 0. So the gradient function is equal to 2x minus 6. And at this particular minimum point here, the gradient is equal to 0. So we know that 2x minus 6 is equal to 0 at this point, at the minimum point. So now let's solve this equation, add 6 to both sides, 2x equals 6, and dividing by 2 we get x equals 3. So the x coordinate of this point is equal to 3, so we've got 3 and then something. So we just need to find what the something will be. Now obviously we know that x is equal to 3, so if we substitute that back into our original y equals x squared minus 6x plus 4, we'll find the y coordinate. So y equals 3 squared subtract 6 times 3 plus 4. So whenever we work that out, we get 3 squared is 9. 6 times 3 is 18, so minus 18 plus 4. So 9 take away 18 will be negative 9 or minus 9, plus 4 will be equal to minus 5. So the y coordinate of this point is equal to minus 5. So the coordinates of this minimum point are equal to 3 minus 5. And that's it. So to find the coordinates of a minimum point of a graph, we can just differentiate it, put it equal to 0, and then find our x value, and then find our y value. So let's have a look at our next question now. So this time we've got a cubic, and we've got two turning points. We've got this turning point here, which is a maxima, or maximum, and then we've got this minimum turning point here. And we've been asked to find the coordinates of both the stationary points of this graph, y equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus 24x. So again, we're going to differentiate, so we're going to get dy by dx. And when we differentiate, we get, bring the 3 down, so 3x squared, reducing the power by 1, subtract, bring the 2 down, so it's going to be 6 x to the power of 1, and then differentiate in minus 24x would be just be minus 24. Now we know at these two particular points we know the gradient is equal to 0. So what we know is that dy by dx is equal to 0, so we're going to write 0 equals 3x squared minus 6x minus 24. So now we've got 0 equals 3x squared minus 6x minus 24. Now what's fantastic is this right hand side can all be divided by 3, actually both sides of the equation can be divided by 3. So we would get 0 equals x squared subtract 2x subtract 8. Now we can factorise this, so 0 equals brackets, 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 so x and x and minus 4 and plus 2, and just checking, minus 4 times 2 is minus 8, and minus 2 plus 8, fantastic. So that means that x equals 4, or x equals negative 2. So if we look back at the graph here, we know that this negative 2 will be for this first turning point here, this maximum, so minus 2, and then we'd have to find the y coordinate, and this 4 would be for the second coordinate, this minimum point here, so this is be 4 and something else. Okay, so let's find the y coordinates of these turning points, or these stationary points. So let's start off with x equals 4. So whenever x equals 4, y will equal 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared minus 24 times 4. And when we do that, we get the answer will be equal to negative 80. 
Um, I did do that in the calculator. And the next one, x is equal to negative 2. So again, we're going to substitute the, that into our y equals, our equation of the curve. So we get y equals, make sure you put your negative 2 in brackets, a negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 24 times negative 2. And when we do that, we get the answer of 28. So that means that this maximum point will have the coordinates of negative 2, 28, and the coordinates of this minimum point are 4, negative 80. And that's it. So to find the coordinates of these stationary points, all we've done is differentiated the equation of the curve, got dy by dx, put that equal to 0, solve that to get the x coordinates, and put those back in to get the y coordinates. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're now going to look at how to use the second derivative to show whether a stationary point is a maximum or minimum. So for maximum turning points, the second derivative will be less than zero. And for minimum turning points, the second derivative is greater than zero. So if we have a look at our last example again. So our last example, we had finding the coordinates of the stationary points of this, of this cubic graph. So we had the cubic graph and we had our maximum turning point at minus 2, 28. And our minimum turning point at 4, negative 80. So if we differentiate again and get d2y over dx squared, we get, bringing the two down, 6x and reduce the power by 1, 1. And then differentiate minus 6x would be minus 6, and differentiate minus 24 would be 0. So our second derivative, our d2y over dx squared, is equal to 6x subtract 6. Now if we substitute in this value of minus 2 for this maximum point, so for this maximum point here, x is equal to minus 2. And the second derivative, if we substitute our minus 2 into that, well, 6 times minus 2 is minus 12, and take away 6 would be minus 18. So we've got for this maximum point, the second derivative is negative. And if we have a look at this, for maximum points, the second derivative should be less than zero. So that's correct. And for our minimum turning point, we have x is equal to 4. So if we substitute 4 into this, well, whenever x is equal to 4, we get the second derivative is equal to, well, 6 times 4 is 24. Take away 6 is 18. And that's positive. And just checking, for minimum turning points, the second derivative should be positive. And that's correct. So let's have a look at a typical question now where we're asked to find the, the coordinates of the stationary points but also the nature of the stationary points as well. So the question says, find the coordinates and nature of the stationary points off the graph y equals x subtract x squared subtract x cubed. So to find the coordinates of the stationary points we're going to differentiate. So we're going to find dy by dx, so dy by dx. And we know that's obviously equal to zero, so let's differentiate it and get what that is and put it equal to zero. So differentiating 1x, well that'll just be 1. Differentiate minus x squared, we'll bring the 2 down, so that'll be minus 2x, reduce the power by 1, so that'll be minus 2x. And then differentiate minus uh, x cubed, so bring the 3 down, so minus 3x squared. Now we know that dy by dx is equal to 0 at stationary points, so we're going to write 0 equals 1 minus 2x minus 3x squared. Now I'm going to bring everything over to the left hand side because I want to make this x squared positive, so that's going to be 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And I'm now going to factorize it. So factorizing would give me, putting in my brackets, where I've got minus, I've got 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. So I'm going to put a 3x and an x in the brackets. We know the two numbers are going to times together to be minus 1, but we want a 2x in the middle. So I'm going to put the plus 1 there. So that would give me 3x. And then putting a minus 1 there would be then bring me down to the 2x that we want. So then just solving this will give us then that x equals a third or x equals minus 1. So we're going to have a turning point at the point on the graph whenever the x coordinate is equal to a third. And we're going to have another turning point or stationary point whenever x is equal to minus 1. So let, what we're now going to do is we're going to substitute these x values into the equation of the curve to get the y values. So whenever x is equal to minus 1, we're going to substitute minus 1 in here and work that out. I'm going to sort of cheat now. I've already worked it out. So y is equal to minus 1. So the coordinate would be minus 1 minus 1. There's a stationary point there. And we'd also substitute in x is equal to a third into this equation. So we'd do a third minus a third squared minus a third cubed. And that would give us the other stationary point, And that is equal to y would be equal to 5 27 And that would be that the coordinate will be one third and five twenty seven, so it'll be a stationary point there as well. So now we've been asking the question to find the nature of the stationary points. So we're going to find the second derivative. We're going to differentiate again to get d two y over dx squared. So let's do that. So d two y over dx squared. So differentiating one will be zero. Differentiating minus two x, so it'll be minus two. 
and differentiating minus 3x squared will bring the two down to be minus 6x. And what we're now going to do is we're going to substitute in these x values here and here, this x value of minus 1 and x value of a third into our d2y over dx squared to find if they're positive or negative. Remember, if it's positive, it's a minimum. If it's a negative, it's a maximum. So let's substitute those in. So whenever x is equal to minus 1, d2y over dx squared would be equal to minus 2 minus 6 times minus 1 would be minus 6. So we've got minus 2 minus minus 6, so that's equal to 4. So we have got at x equals minus 1, we've got d2y, the second derivative, is bigger than 0. So that means that because it's bigger than 0, that's a minimum turning point. So we know that minus 1 minus 1 is a minimum. So I'm just going to write min to save me a bit of time there. And then for our next coordinate, whenever x is equal to one third, we're going to have d2y over dx squared is equal to minus two minus six times a third. Six times a third will be two because a third of six is two. So we've got minus two minus two. So it's going to be minus four. So that's negative. So we know it's a maximum d2y over dx squared is less than zero. So therefore the point one third five twenty sevenths is a maximum is a max. And that's it. So if you want to find the coordinates of stationary points, use the fact that dy by dx is equal to zero to help you. And if you want to find if a stationary point is a maximum or a minimum, use this point that the second derivative d2y over dx squared is negative for a maximum and d2y by dx squared is positive for a minimum. That's it.